Genes and aging are heart disease risk factors we can't control so far. But there is one risk factor we can work on that will have a positive effect on all the others. We know that for people who exercise daily throughout midlife into later life, these people very rarely get heart attacks and strokes. Our own research has shown that diet and exercise can contribute to keeping inflammation down, they contribute to keeping blood pressure down, they contribute to keeping cholesterol down, and all of these are contributing in a very important way. Who hasn't been told by their doctor to get out and exercise? But how many of us actually take that advice? You think about how hard it is to get people to be more active. What could we do? So we proposed a challenge, and in class, somebody came up with a seven-minute app that has you do 12 30-second workouts with 10-second breaks, and it's got push-ups and squats and lunges and triceps. This is my favorite thing to do, lunges. Oh, those are both good. Uh, go to the other side. Oh, go to the other side. Let's make this the social norm in the class, that it is acceptable to get up and move, because honestly, as health professionals, it should be unacceptable to sit still for two hours and listen to me rant on and on. It's not enough for us to sit at our hospital and talk about this. We need to get into the community and say, the biology of this disease tells us that if I can get people in their teens and 20s and 30s into exercising regularly, we just won't have as much diabetes, we won't have as much heart disease, we'll have fewer need for the angioplasties and the surgeries that my cardiovascular colleagues are so good at providing. It's a win-win if we do it right. Go around, go around. 